Welcome to Dating, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansi Me. Thank you so much all our returning guests and all the new guests for coming to this channel as your source of learning and a, a point of growth for all of us. Uh, I kindly ask you to look at the subscribe button in the event that you're not subscribed. Please sign in and subscribe for this will help me to grow and I'll be able to give you more, more content. Thank you so much. It will do me a lot of good. Today we are looking at uh, the habits, the four habits that cause uh, the, the death of a formerly excellent romantic relationship to come crumbling. And then you find people, they are not agreeing, they are on tension, and things are not happening the way they planned to be. Of course, every relationship, they are always dreams. People think about love, about an excellent marriage, about raising their children in love, about going for picnics, and people get to a time and these things do not happen. And if you look back in the relationship, you will realize that there are some things that happened that brought the tension and the anger and the bitterness and the challenges and the rejection and the hate that is now accumulated. So today we look at the four habits, four habits that kill a formerly relationship that was romantic, that was healthy, that was strong, and they bring it to, to zero. And number one, these are silent treatments. You know those moments when people quarrel and when there are disagreements, when you are forgotten to pick the children, they've given you the money and, and, and then the wife is like, the money is not enough. The man goes to work and then he doesn't come back early. And when there is tension built up as a result of that action, the pride sets in and everyone goes into silent relationship. Is there a remedy for that? Yes, if you keep silent, the marriage will die. The relationship will collapse. Even if it is not marriage, any relationship will die as long as there is silent treatment. And what is the remedy? Talk. Talk, talk, talk. Even if you don't feel like talking, talk. When you talk, you get to that point of understanding each other and uh, eventually you find a solution to the problem. Number two, escapism. You know, you have quarreled, the man has come, you ask him why he didn't reply to your text and he turns around, you ask him why he, he, he you know, he didn't pick the children at school, he's angry, you ask him about anything, why he didn't pick uh, the things you asked him to pick for you at the shop, and instead of answering you, he just drives back his car. And it is always a habit for men. He just drives out his car, goes and escapes the situation. Goes to the bar, drinks with her friends, and then comes back when it is time to sleep. Now let me tell you, it, you can never escape a problem. However much you go and you come back, the problem will be there. I guarantee you women will wait for you even if it is one year. They wait for you, you will still come and you'll find the problem did just go away. So what do you do when there is a, a disagreement, when there is tension, when there is a problem? Stay around. Stay around and create a, an environment of explanation, an environment of listening to each other, an environment of apologizing. When that happens, you are saving the formal you know, the relationship that was coming to a, a breaking point. And number three, dishonor. In most cases, when there is a problem, and this is very common to women, they run, go to their relatives, talk about the man, discuss everything that is disgusting, talk to the friends about it. No wonder your friends will come after your man after you have talked to them. They will come after him and they will have him because they will have the words to use against you. So don't discuss your man. When you have disagreed, when you have failed and, and you know things are not working, don't go back to your home. Remember after you've talked about this man in your home, when things are okay, you don't go back and talk to them that things are okay. For them, they will hold him as a bad man. And you can only be a queen for as long as you keep the crown on your husband's head. So learn to guard each other's secrets. When you ashamed someone, he stops being ashamed over anything. If he beats you once and, and you and if you allow him to beat you once, he will continue beating you. If you talk about him as a bad man and your people know him as bad, then he would have nothing to, to protect anymore. So avoid dishonoring each other. Even men talk about their women uh, with friends and their sisters 
And so you find a woman has nowhere she can she can breathe from. She goes to the workmates, her people at the office also know that this woman is, is not good. So stop dishonoring each other. The relationship has to be kept strong uh, and romantic. Then number four, the last one. This is judging, judging each other and uh, labeling, labeling each other, uh, calling each other name. When a problem has happened, before you shift to the problem to tell the, your spouse that she's a liar, is is a cheat, is something, what is the problem? Instead of saying you are a selfish person, respond to the problem. What could have been the cause? Is it forgetfulness? Is it um, you don't operate from the same understanding. Women operate from a different level. Men operate from a different level. There are things we are all strong and there are things we are all weak at. So in the event that you're dealing with something that you're strong at, don't label the other person as lazy. Don't judge them. That is not. That may not be their strength. That may not be something that they really want to do. Don't label someone selfish. Don't label someone lazy. Don't label someone expensive. Just get to the problem. What is causing that disagreement? And so when you separate the problem from personality labels, you will do a great deal in handling these tensions that come up in the marriage. For instance, you sent an SMS in the morning and then this person didn't respond to the SMS. And so when this person comes at home, you are insulting. So why didn't you pick up, why didn't you answer my phone? I know I called you a long time ago and you didn't answer. Let me tell you, my husband is not a mobile phone person. And so I have learned. So I don't judge him whether he has answered my phone or not. I will try to figure out other ways of getting to him because I know he will keep the phone and forget about it. So I don't label him because he doesn't pick the call. Or when he picks and answers later, I'll be grateful. But if it is urgent, I will figure out how else I can get to him. I know it is a problem, I cannot solve it, so I can't judge him with that. And so, when we look at those three things, one, pride, that leads you into silence, um, silence treatment. Two, uh, escapism, that men always want to, to run away and then they, they miss uh, to solve the problem. And number three, dishonor, discussing your problems and, your, and the personality of your spouses with relatives, with friends, with workmates, and, and then it, 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 it judges, it brings uh, the, the relationship to calm down, and eventually you find that there is no more romance because you have been, your self-esteem has been killed. And number four, judging and labeling each other, even without trying to understand what the cause of the problem or what the source of the problem was, and you just generally label this person as a weak, as a weakling, and so let's build uh, habits that make our relationships stronger. Talk, give opportunity to explain, guard your privacy, and uh, understand the strengths and the weaknesses, and deal with the problem without dragging in personalities. Thank you so much. Let's grow together. Uh, remember to subscribe like this video and drop us a comment if there is any other topic that you want us to talk about. Bye-bye. God bless you.